Hey everybody, welcome back to Learn with Optimizer. I'm Nava Hopkins, evangelist for Optimizer, and it is my extreme pleasure to have Juan from the customer success team here with us today to discuss shopping. Now, one of the things that we're really, really excited about in discussing uh, shopping with you all is that there are a number of exciting enhancements to the optimizer tool, but also there's a number of exciting trends just to dig into. So you're in for a really great session. Juan, thank you so much for joining us. No, Nava, thank you so much for inviting me. I am super excited to be part of this relaunch of the Learn with Optimizer series. And you know what? I'm even more excited about the things that we're going to show today and about this holiday season. Uh, and all of the possibilities that the optimizer tools that we've been updating will unlock for our users. So should we dive in? Let's do it. Perfect. So let's just uh, quickly run through through the agenda. Uh, we'll start with uh, one analysis tool. We call it the Shopping Feed Audit, which basically lets you do a quick health check of your feed, of your inventory. Uh, and it's a great starting point when you have to uh, prepare it, set, uh, get everything ready before launching your new uh, e-commerce campaigns. Uh, after that, we'll also have a look at the shopping campaign management tool, along with a little bit of the feeds analysis uh, uh, capabilities. But something that I'm really excited to show you here is how it can help you build uh, performance-based campaigns, which I'm sure you've heard of uh, a little bit uh, in the in the last few months. And uh, lastly, we'll close with a quick look at the rule engine. Uh, just a couple of examples to get ideas going there uh, on how you can uh, exclude poor performing listing groups from Pmax campaigns, as well as streamlining search query management on shopping campaigns. So having that said, uh, let's jump right into the optimizer tools. So uh, when you go to optimizer and you open your dashboard, you'll see a couple of audits here. The one we'll be talking about is the feed audit. Um, as I mentioned, it, it is a great first step to make sure everything is in order in the merchant feed when you are taking on a new e-commerce account or you're about to launch uh, new campaigns or even when you need to send a report to your client or colleague in charge of feed uh, maintenance, right? So you'll see that score here. This is uh, an indication that, that Optimizer will share right away on, uh, in the account dashboard. And you can open that report from here, or you can also go to audits and insights, and you'll find it right on top, shopping feed audits, which will give you the flexibility to create new templates and decide what are the aspects from the merchant feed that you want to audit. So some of the things that it can help you check if there are any product disapprovals uh, along with the reason, and that's a big uh, thing, right? Uh, you can also check if there are any expect expensive product groups or listing groups. Um, something really nice that our customers really like here is the fact that it can also help you see if your prices are competitive with uh, the market by using benchmark uh, price uh, generated by Google or provided by Google and comparing it uh, with, with the rest, right? So this can give you a good idea of how everything's going, basic product data, if there's anything empty that is essential for the merchant feed and for your shopping ads to function well. Uh, and it, it is as easy as enabling or disabling the exact things that you would like the tool to evaluate for you. Um, once you're done, you can save this template. You can schedule it so you can receive it on a, on a frequent basis on your inbox or you can simply run it now and see the results. So the results will look like this. Uh, we'll give you uh, on the, the full results page and grade the, the results out of the results of each of the different audits. And this is how it would look like, right? So you get your, uh, your list of disapproved products. By the way, uh, quick disclaimer, this is a test a dummy account. So some of the data here will not make sense. This is obviously dramatic. 100% of the products are disapproved, but it gives you an idea of what it can help you do, all right? Uh, definitely try it out, uh, go through the, the results. And if you need to share this with someone outside of Optimizer, you can save it as a PDF, or let's say that I want to send a list of disapproved products to the person in charge of optimizing the merchant feed. 
I can download that data and send it as an Excel file. Uh, so Neva, what do you think? Uh, is, is this something that you've seen uh, advertisers spend a lot of time on when doing manually? Well, one of the things that's actually really interesting is that in getting prepared for Q4, audit your feed, audit your feed, audit your feed. That is the the, the mantra of, of getting ready for Q4. So this is a powerful way to make sure that you're in the clear, that you're ready, that you, you can kind of dot your I's, cross your T's, and, and make sure that you're set up for success. One thing that I, I think is actually very powerful is that you're given that ability to see, okay, quickly what's not quite right, but also what's going well. Um, so, because I think a lot of us spend a lot of time thinking about how can we be better, but it's also nice to hold on to where, where are we doing okay? So it's it's always good to have those little bits of affirmation. Yeah. Um, so now let's look at the shopping campaign management. You'll also find it from management and optimizations, shopping and Pmax retail. That's the first tool right there on top. Um, so what's the shopping campaign management tool? Once your feed is ready and it's been audited and fixed, you'll want to start building out your shopping and performance max campaigns. So this tool can help you create shopping and Pmax campaigns at scale, but not just that, it can also help you keep them up to date. Uh, with synchronization automations, and it can also help you restructure them after you've launched them. Um, so the tool is a one-step solution that combines your, if you're a long-time optimizer user, you're probably already familiarized with the shopping campaign builder refresher or structure. This is now a one-stop solution that consolidates all of those functionalities into one uh, with a cleaner and easier to use interface. Um, so let me walk you through the interface real quick. You'll see the campaign groups uh, you've already created in and outside of Optimizer right here. Um, you can set up the automations so Optimizer can add the product groups based on the contents of the merchant feed or remove anything that's no longer uh, available in there, uh, edit your campaign group structures, or see if there's anything to update in those campaigns. You also have a merchant feed analysis that will give you uh, a quick view uh let's say the how uh different attributes um are assigned to different uh products what's the coverage that the different attributes have for different products uh if there's anything missing uh and, and this can help you decide how you want to structure your campaigns if you're going with something like product type for example in this case i have four product types um and the coverage is on 954 products. But let's get to the exciting stuff and let's see how we can create a new campaign or multiple campaigns with this. Um, this is what, what I'm about to show you is actually a super recent feature that lets you build campaigns based on performance. So I'll start off by clicking here, create new campaign, which will take me to the second screen where I'll simply need to uh, pick the merchant feed to use. I have some options to decide what are the specific products that I want to uh, run this campaign for, that I want to advertise, uh, which is optional. Uh, by default, it will run for all products in your merchant feed. And then I have the different campaign types to select, right? So important to know that you can use this not just to create standard shopping campaigns, but also Pmax. And this example that I prepared uh, is actually focused on, on performance max, but everything that you can do for one campaign type is pretty much available for the uh, for the next one. So let's have a look at the campaign structure. When you're starting to build out your campaign structure, you're going to see three different options. You can create a single campaign, or you can create multiple campaigns by performance or custom rules, or by uh, following a more traditional approach with uh, campaigns, multiple campaigns by feed attributes. Um, so let's have a look at how to customize the different performance buckets now and how to define the criteria used for each of the different campaigns that we want to build. We're going to click here, customize performance buckets. And what we'll have the option to do here is, for example, create the different campaigns and say, all right, for my worst performing products, I don't want to assign as much budget as for the best performing products. And I'll probably use a higher target ROAS to make sure that I'm not spending as, as much money on, on, on those products. 
So my criteria would be if the number of impressions is low and these are non-converting products, they'll all be placed into this underperforming campaign. Then uh, you can also have a couple more campaigns for products that are performing uh, near target and say here, well, if the ROAS is anywhere close to the target ROAS, uh, let's put those products into this bucket. And for your top products that have a great ROAS, have a separate campaign for them with a lot more budget and optional uh, variable target ROAS there, uh, depending on what your strategy is. Um, as the last point, so see this as a funnel, right? Optimizer will start adding the, the products based on their performance into each of the campaigns that I just showed you. Uh, and we recommend having a catch all campaign uh, for all of the other products that don't meet any of the criteria that you define. And you can have a strategy for those as well. So they can start receiving some traffic, gathering some performance data, and hopefully they'll be moved then into one of the, the campaigns, the main campaigns that you've created. Um, once this structure is defined, you just save it. You can add other levels to the, to the rest of the structure if you wanted to make it a little bit more structured. Uh, if, in, if inside of the performance buckets you want to get asset groups or ad groups uh, by brand, for example, you can absolutely do that. And this kind of a structure always ends with a listing group or a product group, in the case for a standard shopping campaign, at the item ID. And why is this? Because with optimizers automations, uh, we'll make sure to move those product groups to see the performance for each of those items at the product group or listing group level. So the automation can move the products in and out of their campaigns based on their up-to-date performance. So now I want to pause here for a second because this is something that I'm so excited about. I know uh, uh, from a lot of users that they end up using supplemental feed uh, solutions for this kind of approach, and this should make their life so much easier. What have you heard about this kind of uh, practice? Well, in, in I, I have to say one of the, the biggest frustrations, whether you're a PPC or whether you're an SEO, is dealing with bad feeds and dealing with uh, shopping providers where it doesn't quite connect with the interface you want to use. This is such a game changer where Optimizer does the heavy lifting and you can just focus on making sure that your product information is correct, your descriptions are correct. You don't have to deal with the technical lift. Um, the other thing that I think is really important, we oftentimes will laser focus, just think about ROAS. But unfortunately, if you do that, you will oftentimes actually shoot yourself in the foot because there is a difference between revenue and profit. So there is a, a big, big benefit to layering on additional metrics that come from you and your knowledge of your business so that it can really do its best job. So this is absolutely a very powerful way to, to think about your campaigns. But more importantly, it's a very powerful way to get buy-in from your boss to scale your campaigns because you're not asking for a big, expensive technical integration. You're asking for, hey, I want to test some stuff. It's, it's a much easier ask. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, something that it's worth uh, mentioning about this is that this is not the only strategy that the tool will help you implement. If you want to follow a more traditional approach, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can also create, let's say, uh, campaigns by attributes, by standard feed attributes. That's completely doable. Uh, and to give you an example of how that would look like, instead of us creating the campaigns, by the different performance buckets. You could also easily create them by product type and then define the rest of the strategy for your ad groups or product groups. In this case, we're looking at an example with a standard shopping. And um, as a last step, either with the performance-based campaigns or with uh, this approach, you'll get this preview page that will let you see exactly how the campaigns will look like before you launch them. And from this point forwards, all you have to do is simply click here, upload the campaigns, uh, push them to the engine, to Google Ads. Or the, the real beauty of this is to start automating them as well with the, what we call the refresher. So the refresher will take care of checking the contents of the merchant feed if there's anything missing or that needs to change in the campaigns that you just launched. 
optimizer will take care of that process for you. And this obviously you can run daily, weekly, and just let it run and you won't have to be worried about any manual changes uh, moving forward. So that is the shopping campaign management tool. Um, you'll find some additional resources, frequently asked questions, do's and don'ts with this kind of uh, practice, this kind of structure right here in the contextual menu. I invite you to check it out. Um, and before we finish, I do want to share real quick uh, a couple of ideas in the rule engine, as I mentioned. So you've probably heard about the rule engine before. It's our custom optimizations and automations builder. Uh, I won't go in depth into this because uh, we'll share some resources. We have some uh, video tutorials that explain this really well, but just to get those ideas flowing. If you go to the rule engine, you'll have the option to create a rule engine strategy from here. Uh, from the instance strategy menu or list of pre-built or library of pre-built strategies, you'll find a section for shopping campaigns. I invite you to have a look at, uh, at that section because you'll find things as uh, optimizations to help you find non-converting search queries uh, to add as negatives to your shopping campaigns. Uh, one of the checks that a strategy will do is finding product, uh, sorry, search terms that have a high cost and no conversions or a high cost and, and very low ROAS. And the, the great thing about the rule engine is that all of this can be customized. You can change the entire logic before you get this to run, or you can just use it as one of optimizers, one click optimizations. You go in the strategy, you load the suggestions or the results, and you apply the changes after you've approved them. Another idea, if you're running performance max campaigns, is to have uh, to build a strategy to help you find listing groups that are uh, part of the top spenders in, in the campaign without driving any conversions. Uh, and from here, you can decide whether you want to exclude those listing groups from your Vmax campaigns uh, or not. So that gives you uh, one uh, idea for optimizations on your performance max campaigns that you can leverage uh, with this tool. So a reminder, uh, and a lot of our customers tend to be a little bit intimidated by the idea of the automation and creating this kind of a strategy, but you can absolutely create safe automations with this. You're not forced to let the automation apply changes for you. It can also send you notifications. Hey, I found this in your account. You go in Optimizer, you review the, the suggestions and you apply them if you want to. Um, and with that, those are some of the, the tools that, that I wanted to share in this, uh, in this session today. Uh, Nava, uh, what do you think? Any, any additional things that you would like to mention? Uh, one thing in just in general uh, that, that's helpful to know about Optimizer, Optimizer empowers you to think about more than just Google. So while we mostly focused on Google tools today, absolutely be empowered to harness the power of Microsoft, be empowered to harness the power of Amazon. There are a number of different ways that you can achieve uh, profit and victory with your accounts. One other thing just to note when it comes to uh, technical versus creative, shopping is one of those things that it can feel, as, as Juan said, it can feel very intimidating. The beautiful thing about Optimizer is that whether you have a very technical integration or whether you're, you're just uploading CSVs, it, it, can, it can run with what you need. And if you are stuck, you have the amazing um, CS team to, to help you along. So definitely do not feel like you're an island unto yourself. You have resources at your disposal. And with that, I think we covered everything. So uh, Juan, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Um, if you all have any questions about shopping, absolutely. Uh, uh, send them in. If you have topics that you'd like to see learn with Optimizer cover, absolutely let us know. Um, next uh, episode, we will be diving into uh, the top uh, tips that we think or the top tools that we think you should explore. So if you're watching these in a series, you'll see us uh, cover that next. Uh, if you're watching this as a one-off, then enjoy the one-off. Uh, but thank you again for investing your time to learn about shopping with Optimizer. Thanks everyone for watching and thank you Nada.